What I want to talk to you about today is a subcontractor scam. I don't believe it's great for the community, I don't believe it's great for you, the homeowner, and I don't believe it's great for the subcontractor. What this means is the most common way that a roofing contract is sold, right, when you want to hire a roofer to do your home, is you hire some company who has a website and a brand and a logo, and they come out and they estimate your roof. And then what happens is they go to the small companies, the guys that you'll see on Kijiji, and they're gonna say, hey, how about you get this job? Or hey, how about you go up and do this roof? They negotiate the labor rates and get a fixed cost. What that means is they have a rate sheet that says, we're gonna pay X dollars per bundle or X dollars per 100 square feet. And what that means is your roofers actually not paid hourly, they're not paid to produce, they're paid based on just a set size of the job. And what that means is that you're not really paying for quality. You're not paying for people to take their time and do things right. What also happens is there's a, a mismatch in the communication. It doesn't mean that every subcontractor is bad. It means that the company might not have an effective way to communicate the work order in such a way that what they promised you is gonna get done actually gets done. At Sergeant's Roofing, what we do is we actually have all in-house workers. Our guys who work for us show up with their logos loud and proud on the side of our trucks. When you hire a subcontractor, what you're gonna notice is that if you look out and you see all the roofing companies out there, most of the time it's an unmarked truck that shows up or maybe they have to roll their back windows down because they usually got the logo on the back window. In the subcontractor agreement, they all say, cannot have logos on site, no branding. The whole idea is they wanna pretend that it's their roofers coming to do the work. In my eyes, I don't think it's right for the customer to have it so that it's a kind of a secret that who's doing the roof. You should be loud and proud about who you are. You should put your work on display and you should want the entire neighborhood to see your work. That's how I work, that's how we run our company. The other thing that happens is we believe it's not right for the community. First of all, my guys, they have to be good ambassadors of the company every minute they're behind the wheel and every minute they're on site because they're wearing logoed shirts, they have a logoed truck. I wanna be able to make sure that my guys are driving safely, conducting themselves professionally out there, that if you see some guys acting in a way that's unsafe or rude, that you can actually call the company and be like, hey, your workers are on this site and this is the way they were acting. I believe that's the right way to run a business. The other problem is, when, you're, when they're hiring these subcontractors, the company doesn't have any control over the payroll of that subcontractor. So what ends up happening is they're paying cash, they're paying bundle rates, they're not contributing to the tax base. A workers' compensation is drastically underfunded because they're covering the injuries of people that didn't have workers' compensation. And then when they go and say, I was hurt at work, they go find the contractor that they worked for and they say, oh, well, yeah, we had personal coverage, but not coverage for our workers. Then it's up to WCB to go chase them down for money they don't have. You can't squeeze blood from a rock. So workers' compensation has to take care of the worker, but the company isn't paying for that. So then that cost goes out to everybody else. And the same thing goes for the income taxes that are not collected. All of our guys are paid hourly, paid overtime, vacation pay, and all their income taxes and source deductions are, are taken off their check and put out there into the community to pay for our firefighters, to pay for our roads, pay for our infrastructure. I believe that the subcontracting thing is kind of a scam. It doesn't work for the customer, it doesn't work for the community, and it doesn't work for the sub, because the sub is now responsible for all the liability, they're responsible for hiring, they're responsible for firing, they're responsible for doing payroll. Usually they're just too busy focusing on the roofing. Who wants to go home and do payroll and income taxes and source deductions and T4s and ROEs after being on a roof for eight, 10 hours? We have a person in the office who does that. So I believe that you need to work with a company that is gonna actually take care of you if you're a worker, and if you're a customer, you should be working with a company that's gonna take you, take care of you as the customer by making sure that everybody that's working on your project is actually employed by the company that you hire. So when you're looking for a roofing contractor, make sure you check for WCB clearance on all the workers, you check for insurance, and look, if the company asks the company, do you subcontract or do you use in-house workers? If they're subcontracting, you wanna find out, have they been through the manufacturer training? And how do you make sure that what you, they promise you is actually gonna get done? Make sure you ask those questions because we wanna make sure that we're elevating the roofing industry by teaching first and selling roofs second. We believe that if you feel that you're empowered and educated enough to make the right decision in roofing, if you choose to hire a company subcontracts, that's up to you, that's your decision. This is the great thing about a free market. But we believe that you should at least know the difference. Thank you for watching.